Well, good day and welcome to you. It is October the 11th, and I hope wherever you happen to be, you're having a fantastic day. Now, if you're new to Search for Signs, my name is Gary Willing. And on this channel here, we talk about the emergence of Maitreya and the Masters of Wisdom. So if you're new, definitely recommend checking out some of the videos I put up. Um, you can check out some of the links that I provided in the description portion of this video. Hopefully, you'll take advantage of it. Now, I did try to answer this per the first part of this person's question in the last video I put up today. In this video, I'm going to just really kind of touch on this in some way because I really can't answer this for myself. But he asks, how does a human grow from mortal to immortal? Or I guess another way of saying it would be, how does a person become a master, right? Well, you're asking a mere mortal himself. So I'm just like you, <laughs> whoever asked this question, placeholder. Um, there's no way for me to answer this with any kind of legitimacy. <laughs> I can just point you in the right direction, you know, really. And the direction in which I point anyone would be uh, checking out and reading Benjamin Krem's books, Alice Bailey books. It doesn't mean that you'll become a master after reading that, but it will definitely give you an idea, I guess, about how to become a master. You know, you know, Maitreya is on TV now, okay? So let me just say this. And he's not claiming to be a master or the long-awaited teacher. He's just presenting himself, of course, like an ordinary person. So we wouldn't be getting teachings from him right now about how to become more divine, how to be divine perfectly the way a master is. But in the not-so-distant future, he will be teaching humanity that, <clears throat> you know, or at least the start of it. You know, in our lifetime, we'll probably just get the start of it. But over the course of the next 2,000 or so years, you know, that teaching will be broader and deeper in a way that we couldn't possibly even imagine to today to be. And there'll be other masters that will come along not long after Maitreya is out known for who he is, that will be their job to teach us in that way too. Okay. Now, some of the masters won't be teaching us that. They'll be working with humanity on the other side of the coin about building and rebuilding our structures to support that divinity like the economic structures and the political structures and the social structures and that kind of thing. You see what I'm saying? So we need both, right? Now, to be a master is to be truly divine. And that's different for each and every one of us because we're all individual sparks of that same divinity. But when we see these masters, like Maitreya or the Master Jesus or the Master Kuthumi who was the Master John or the Master Moria who was the Master Peter, and so forth and so forth, we will have perfect examples of what it means to be truly divine. And so whether we're interacting with them, you know, individually or as a group, or we see them on TV or on the internet, we'll have a better sense of it, you know, because they're perfect examples. They, they actually know right now how to be a master because they've, they've achieved it. Okay. Now, the other thing too is, just having them as those examples will give us a better sense of it, will inspire us in our own way to become like them. So that's how we'll do it, you know, and that's why they're coming back here at this time. Now, if I can say a couple things, if you read Benjamin Krem's books, it will give you a better sense. If you read Alice Bailey's books, it will give you a better sense of it. But it's only a sense of it. You know, like I said, it's, it's going to be seeing them out in our lives that will give us a better idea of how to be a master. But I just want to add a couple things that Maitreya said to me over the years that <clears throat> isn't written down in any of Benjamin Krem's books or Alice Bailey books, but it's helped change my life. And I do think they are preliminary teachings on how to become divine. Okay, so the first one was when Maitreya told me, uh, I never judge anyone on whether they're good or bad. I only notice the good things that they do. Now, each and every one of us are critical in our own way. And when we're critical, we don't see life as it truly is. We see us as separate from the person who we're being critical of, you know, which could also make us a hypocrite because we're probably doing the same things that we're critical of other people of doing, right? So that's a whole other, you know, video to talk about. But so when we see that, we see it as separate and there's no truth to it. And Maitreya says the truth of existence is that we are all one, right? Now, you can't go from being critical in the way that we all are today to the next day being loving unconditionally way, the way that these masters do. It's a process. We have to start somewhere, though, right? 
And I do think by not judging people on whether they're good or bad and just notice one good thing that they do perhaps or maybe two can help with that because it's changed my life and it's changed my interactions and the way that I relate with those people who I've had issues with in my life, you know, whether it's coworkers or family or friends or whatever, that I've seen it work, you know, and I do recommend it. And because when you notice one good thing that somebody does, you stop being critical of them. You stop seeing them as separate. You, you love them in a way, right? It might not be perfect, of course, but then you might fall back to being critical and you have to kind of remind yourself, okay, let me just see if I can notice one good thing, right? And then you might go a few days and something comes up and you, oh, you're super critical of that person. Then you have to just remind yourself of what Maitreya said, you know, don't judge them on whether they're good or bad. Notice the good things that they do. So try it and see if it works for you. So hopefully it will. And the other thing that he said to me, what had to do with service, okay? Because service, according to the masters and meditation, are really the way, the quickest way to get somebody from being an ordinary person to being a master to truly manifesting their divinity is in service. And service is really for each and every one of us to choose for ourselves to what to do because there's a whole world to serve and we're all here in, in different capacities. But we all have the ability to serve. And Maitreya, when he's out known for who he is, will be inspiring and teaching humanity to serve, you know, and encouraging us to serve. And perhaps even if you're lucky, he will, you know, present you with a field of service himself. I don't know, you know, maybe, but because he does it all the time to people, you know, and so, um, cause he is a brother, he's an elder brother. He's like a friend, you know, Hey, try this, see if this works for you. Now, the one thing that he said to me, um, he asked me where I work why am I always happy working in the place that I'm working? And my answer to him was, and I wasn't trying to suck up to him, you know, because I just was just saying it how I see it. But I said, you know, when I, when I teach, because I'm a teacher on my job, I lose all sense of myself and I just kind of focus on that other person. And I said, it's the same thing as when I paint. I lose track of who I am, what I'm doing, all the problems in my world. And I'm just kind of in the moment. As Maitreya would say, sincerity is spirit. You're in the moment. You forget all about your troubles and your bank account and what you should be doing and what you're not supposed to be doing. And you're just there, right? And I told, this, I told Maitreya that it gives me a sense of joy that I couldn't do if it wasn't for that. And he goes, that is it. That is it exactly. So serve. And service in whatever capacity, whether it is teaching or working in politics or whatever, you know, if it's creative, whether it's music or painting or writing, you will find that joy in that way. And that's one, that's the quickest way and the fastest way to get there. But I did want to leave you with a little bit of an article that Benjamin Krim's master wrote about joy. And he said this, he said, joy must be understood to be the natural state underlying happiness and sorrow alike. When uncovered, it radiates the light, the light of the soul, on all around and makes manifest the love, which is the nature of God. Love and joy coexist in the heart which is pure, unclouded by fear, hate, or the anguish of despair. Remove fear from your heart and know joy. Release yourselves from hate and know the meaning of love. Cast from you dark despair and stand in your true light. Thus can you enter the kingdom of souls and become a savior of the world. So there you go. Hopefully that answers your question. You guys have a great day. Remember to take action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos.